Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle. From tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride, let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are available at pedalshift.net slash 131, and you can email the show pedalshift at pedalshift.net or call the voicemail hotline 202-930-1109. You can check Pedal Shift out on all the socials as well. A big hello, everybody, back in Washington, D.C., after a glorious, glorious bike tour that I'm really excited to share with you on the next several editions of the Pedal Ship Project. Um, it's hot and muggy here. It was 60-ish and foggy and nice. And, you know, I tell you what, I definitely know why I go to Oregon every year around this time. The difference is palpable. <laughs> it is just a totally different vibe. Uh, one of the great things about going out as well is, of course, I get to hang out with the guys from the Sprocket podcast. And we did an interview and we did well, a hangout basically for about an hour and a half of uh, crazy podcast time. And that just dropped, I believe, yesterday as I'm sitting on the microphone right now. So go check that out. That is the Sprocket Podcast episode number 426. And it was it was just a lot of fun. We talked about all sorts of things. Um, I, I got on a e-scooter in Portland. I did all sorts of crazy kind of stuff. And we talked about that. We well, covered a few things that I've already talked about on the pod as well, but maybe from a different angle. So I think that um, you will probably enjoy it. And if you don't listen to the Sprocket Podcast, I totally, totally encourage you to do it. It's a great show. I feel like that we're kind of cousin podcasts, for lack of a better way of putting it. And it was just a lot of fun. And it was great because we had all three of the gentlemen who are uh, uh, rotating the the two kind of current hosts and then host Emeritus Brock Dennis came in as well. So that was just a lot of fun. We had a great time and a cool hangout. So go check that out, especially because I'm a little late than normal uh, for this one. Normally, I like to get these out on Thursdays, as you know. But I literally got off the plane. I still have to do some more editing, et cetera, et cetera. I basically barely got this one in. So hopefully uh, you'll forgive me for my delay by listening to the Sprocket podcast in between. So here we are. But you're here and we're here. It's episode number 131. This is Pedal Shift Tour Journals, volume 11. Can you believe it? Volume 11. Oregon Coast Loop. That is what I'm going to call it. I think I call it something different in the first part here, but it is Oregon Coast Loop. And this is part one. Uh, as I mentioned, spoiler alert, I made it. I'm sitting here in front of a microphone. I have a lot to say about this ride. It was as fun as I thought it was going to be. It was as exciting as I thought it was going to be. It had its challenges. It had its downs and ups because hills, am I right? Okay, I should put a drum roll in there, but I won't. So for the next several weeks, uh, you're going to be coming along for the ride. This is, uh, as I mentioned, Pedal Shift Tour Journals Volume 11. It will be serialized into chapters just like the Katie Trail ride earlier this year. It's going to probably take over the pod for the next several weeks through August and then a touch into September, taking you along down the Oregon coast and back uh, to Portland. Depending on how things turn out, we might have a bonus week with more than one show. I'll keep you posted on that. It just sort of depends on how many parts this ends up splitting up into. I Just sort of eyeballing it, I don't think I'm going to be doing one day for each part. Uh, I think it may be multiple days. So this may be only, uh, you know, three, four parts. It might be more. I don't know yet, but if it, if it's going to go much more than a month worth of content and uh, time, I'll probably end up compressing things so that you get a couple of chapters per week. So I'll keep it posted on that. Also, I shot a metric crap ton of video, <laughs> technical term, it's coming. I, I don't know when. It's certainly not until September. That, of course, takes a little bit more effort and, and crunch time and whatnot. So that's going to be work that I'm going to be doing over the next several weeks as well. And so that will be supplementing the pod, just like the Kitty Trail ride. I think that there's some really fun, cool stuff. I did a few things that were different. Um, the nature of the ride made it a little harder to do some of the things that I did on the Kitty Trail. So we'll just kind of see how it all comes together. 
I'll be honest, there wasn't nearly as much drama on this uh, ride. I didn't run into a ton of weather difficulties. Uh, Just some things that would be, from a storytelling perspective, a little more interesting were things that I wasn't able to kind of pull out the camera for, for video. So eh, we'll just see how kind of it all goes. But uh, I'm excited to share it with all of you because visually, this is a stunning, stunning ride. And I think I got some good stuff. I just have to, oh, I don't know, go through it all. So that's coming. Be prepared for all of that. And of course, I'll give you a heads up when all of that's coming. Most of the journal speaks for itself, but from time to time, I'm going to jump in and give some additional context on top of the stuff that I recorded in the field. One other thing that I'll mention is that it's not a consistent sound in the field for a variety of reasons. Sometimes I used a different microphone technique. Um, every once in a while, I would make the mistake of using the Bluetooth headphone microphone, which sounds like garbage, And but the content was too good and I had to keep it in there. So forgive me for less than great sounding audio from time to time, but actually for the most part, it, it sounds pretty good. And what I like about it is that it most importantly, from a podcasting perspective, gives you the sounds of what it's like to be there uh, on a, a variety of instances or in a variety of instances. That's really important. The sound of the cars passing by, the sound of the seagulls, the sound of the sea lions, waves, et cetera, et cetera. So I do a lot less sound editing than normal because I want you to kind of feel what it's like being there. Call it a soundscape, if you will. The Oregon Coast is a hilly, foggy, amazing adventure that's part of the larger Pacific Coast bicycling route. It's almost exclusively on U.S. Highway 101, with a few deviations I'll mention along the way. My plan was, as I mentioned on the pod before, to combine local transit on buses with bike touring to do a loop of the coast starting in Portland, going along the entire coast, tagging that California welcome sign, and returning to Portland relatively unscathed. On this edition of the journal, we follow along on days zero and one of the adventure as I ride the buses from Portland to Newport, Oregon, and get rolling on the bike to Florence, Oregon. This was, without a doubt, my biggest transit plus bike tour adventure yet. Let's get rolling. From the Portland Greyhound Station in Portland, Oregon. Well, that kind of makes sense. It's the beginning of Pedal Shift Tour Journal, Volume 11, Oregon Coast, and back. (laughs) I think that's what we're going to call this one. The ride out here was uneventful. My ability to leave on a bike tour in a calm and normal state is clearly not possible because a million and one things have all happened uh, that I won't bore you with. The entire lead up to all of this has been a lot of fun. I ended up doing an episode of the Sprocket podcast, which hopefully you will get a chance to hear. You maybe even have heard it already. And uh, that was a lot of fun to hang out with them again and to also uh, see family and enjoy things here in beautiful Portland during my lead up to all of this. But the real trip begins right now. I'm going to be hopping on not one bus, not two buses, but three buses to get to Newport, Oregon. Um, And the idea of this trip is to be all bike and bus. And I'm uh, intent on sticking with it that way, even though it may mean in certain circumstances that, frankly, I could do it a little bit quicker and more efficiently with other ways. But I want to use the transit situation and I want to use the uh, systems that are set up to kind of prove the point that you don't need a car to be able to do this kind of adventure. And I'll be going all the way to California, tagging the Welcome to California sign, and coming right on back, in fact, to this very spot here at the Portland Greyhound Station in about a week. So exciting stuff to come, an adventure beyond just the bike tour. Uh, It's familiar, it's fun, it's nice, and I'll talk all about that. But, you know, adding on these other elements as well is kind of cool. So off we go. From Tillamook, Oregon, I am all set and I did the bulk of the traveling for today. Very easy ride. Uh, I think, man, this might be my third or fourth time taking this bus up, but uh, it was packed uh, with, with full three bikes all in the front rack and pretty full group of people inside, which was pretty good. It's good to see that the bus is being used so well. And um, on a day that is, what is it? Wednesday. It's literally midweek, so glad to see it's getting used. Waiting for about maybe 20 to 30 minutes or so here. It's just enough time to be um, a comfortable layover, but not enough time for me to go off and explore a little bit. Tillamook's a great town, but I rarely get a chance to hang out here much because I'm usually just sort of itching to get moving. 
whether I'm going just down to Pacific City, uh, which is pretty typical for me when I do this trip, or this trip, which is different, where I'm taking the bus all the way down to the center of the state's coast. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening. I think I got a got a little bit of a wrap action in my uh, pack, and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting to Newport and uh, getting some beers and some good food at Brewers on the Bay. I talk about that ad nauseum because it's that good. Newport, Oregon. I am happy to be here finally. It's, I think that this is an inefficient way to get down here. Uh, having done this, I believe last year I did it. I rented a one-way car rental that I think it took two and a half hours from Portland. Uh, this took me the better part of six hours. And the connections were all great except for the one in Lincoln City. That's fine, whatever. Um, but I'm happy to be here and I'm just ready to kind of get rolling again. It was kind of a bummer because I do for, I did forget that between Lincoln City and Newport is just fabulous riding and really gorgeous. And I kind of regret not getting that piece of the coast in as part of this trip. But I do know there's plenty of wonderful coastline to the south of here. So that'll be all good. Next stop, campground, get stuff settled, and then dinner of champions. Look, I'm not even going to front. It's noisy. And this may not be the best place to be recording audio. Or maybe it's the perfect place to be recording audio. I am just outside of Rogue's Brewers on the Bay after a glorious several beers and a great dinner. And I mean, there's all sorts of stuff going on. There's boats. There's fog. There's obviously the seagulls that you hear. I'm walking uh, closer to the pier because I'm hoping that over all of this din, you might be able to hear the sea lions that are coming out right now. There is something simply magical about Newport, Oregon. I'm hoping you can hear those sea lions, by the way. It's amazing. There's something about jumping into a place where you're literally in a 360 degree space of just escape and magic. I'm enshrouded in fog right now. It's 60 degrees. I left Portland. It's currently at least 90 degrees there. So you're, you're quite literally in a different world. Everything about where I'm at is 180 degrees removed from where I came from. You know, I'm looking, I'm looking at Yakina Bay right now. It is just immersive and magical and amazing. And this is everything about what the Oregon coast is. I'm not saying that if you come out here, you will have the greatest experience of your life and it will be as magical as every time I've come out here. But I'm telling you, I have consistently had some of the best bike touring experiences right here in this space within a quarter mile of the space. There's just something about it. And it's the bridge going over the bay. It's the wildlife. It's the fog. It's the the, the, the brewing company. L- let me talk a little bit about it, Rogue. I, you know, not necessarily my favorite brewing or brewer ever, but this place is pretty cool because you literally are kind of crossing paths with the people who are making the beer, like as you are going and drinking it. I know that's not a unique experience, but for some reason here, it feels different. It's a fun experience and there's just something tangible, tactile even about the whole thing. So um, South Beach State Park is literally a short maybe it's a mile away from here and there's a, a it's relatively car free it's on uh, off of the south jetty here on this side of Yakina Bay from the city of Newport and uh, it is just a fabulous place to camp it's a great place to come here okay let me talk about the fact why I'm lingering here every once in a while you run into people in camp that you just need to stay away from and immediately I had that. We have a fairly crowded camp. It is very clear that there are some very cool people there. Unfortunately, the people that immediately glommed onto me were like kind of the know-it-all types. The know-it-alls that, 
like also I can already tell I don't get along with, um, for a variety of reasons. I won't get into it, but, um, it's just interesting how you can have that juxtaposition. So meanwhile, I'm having this wonderful experience looking out on Yakina Bay and, uh, you know, at the same time, it's sort of like, ah, the camp experience wasn't as hot, but I do know I've got this and I'm, this is what I'm soaking in right now. Yes. I'm going to be going back to my tent, maybe hopefully not, uh, interacting with anybody I don't want to, uh, maybe interacting with some people I do. I mean, that's the one thing we all have choices, right? So I'm going to choose to hang with the people that I want to hang with, uh, or at least, uh, get to know the people that seem to be more in my, uh, frame of reference, shall we say. <laughs> all right, everyone. Day zero, a lot of bus travel, a lot of bus travel. So excited to get this bike up and over some hills starting tomorrow. South Beach State Park, beginning of day one. The morning is super foggy, uh, cool in the 50s. Um, the interesting thing about the Oregon coast is uh, if you're expecting wide ranges in temperatures, you're not going to get it. <laughs> uh, it's it's super consistent. It usually ranges somewhere in the mid fifties into the sixties um, as the day progresses. And some days your your low and your high are going to not be very far apart. And today's one of those days uh, without much chance of getting any sun to break through the clouds here. It's pretty unlikely that. I'm going to be breaking too much into uh, the 60s or even touch the 70s. If the sun comes out, you got a shot at the 70s every once in a while. Um, it's it's kind of it's kind of back and forth. It's kind of uh, unusual to get that much uh, warmth on the coast. So as a result, during the summers. A lot of people who like the heat and like sun and all that, they don't like doing the Oregon coast. And, you know, that makes sense. But for those of us, <laughs> as you all are perfectly aware, this is sort of my wheelhouse. So I'm excited that I'm in, you know, long pants and wearing a wool sweater and a winter hat right now um, as I'm walking around. Now, of course, I'll peel all that off before I get going. But, you know, that's, that's cycling in Oregon in the summer. I uh, have been really soaking this one in, and I think part of the good reason why I've been doing that is because I'm taking more video, and as a, in addition to some of the pictures that I'm taking, so it's you know it gets you to start to notice things like you know more of the sounds, more of the sights, all kind of locked in together. So I think that that's one thing that I'm um, finding I may enjoy this trip even more because I may notice even more because I think when you do a trip multiple times. Sometimes you just sort of filter out some things. So this is forcing me to reacquaint myself with what's going on around me, which I think is great. The campsite was very full last night. It continues to be full. It's only about, it's not even 7 a.m. yet. Um, I ran into uh, uh, <laughs> the one guy that I, I don't think I got along with too well, and I, he's a little gruff this morning. So I don't know if he's decided he doesn't get along with me. So be it. That's, I, I, I would like everybody to like me. If they do not, that is fine too. Um, <laughs> I sort of just bailed last night uh, when I decided that I wasn't, wasn't, wasn't interested in the conversation that, that was happening. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to go into it, <laughs> into the why. Just suffice to say, it just wasn't a direction. It wasn't, wasn't the kind of conversation I was interested in having on a bicycle tour. Let's just put it that way. Um, I go on bicycle tours to escape said conversations. <laughs> Traffic is, is going to be heavy. I think one thing I noticed in Newport is that it is crowded. Uh, crowded for compared to any other time I've been here. So I'm expecting there to be some vehicle traffic. So I think I'm going to be trying to do early mornings and be done um, as early as possible. Uh, especially today. Um, Florence is the Florence and Coos Bay are kind of the next cities of note down the coast, but they do get progressively smaller compared to Newport. Yesterday, as I was taking the bus through Lincoln City, the traffic was way worse than normal, bumper to bumper in parts, which is unusual. Now, sometimes that's better for bicycling because if they're bumper to bumper, that means they're not whizzing by you. But of course, things thin out later, but there's still the volume. So as a result, <laughs> I think I'm going to be trying to do a lot more uh, early mornings. So I think I'm going to try to get out of here at a, uh, probably within the next hour or so. The visitor center here opens up at 
eat and they usually have coffee. <laughs> so, uh, although I, I took my caffeine pill, remember I am stoveless today. So, uh, stoveless for the whole trip. So I'm not making myself any, any coffee in the morning. And I do like to start with it if I can. So I'll take advantage of maybe a first cup off of their pot if they are uh, still doing that. I think they are. The uh, uh, next opportunity for coffee is, I think, maybe another hour's ride down the coast. It's probably about 10 to 15 miles, which is fine. Um, I, I don't need it. I don't think there's addiction issues here, but there's certainly preference issues. Uh, so the caffeine pills will probably be good for all of that. Should be a good ride. Should be a little moist. I One thing that I forgot, which is a problem I am now discovering, is I do not have my rain jacket with me. I literally, it's the it's on my list, but I forgot it. Uh, I was really rushed as I was leaving town. It was hanging up because I had used it, because it's raining constantly in D.C. And so I don't have a windbreaker or rain layer with me. And my brother kindly offered one, and I said, no, 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 it'll be fine. And I, because I looked at the weather and there wasn't any uh, rain, and that's dumb. The Oregon coast is moist all the time because you're cycling through a cloud if there's no rain. And that's how it's going to be today. So I think I may end up having to uh, purchase something in the next town. Um, we'll just see how it goes. I'm sure I'll be warm enough. I'm sure I'll be fine. I've got wool. Um, my my uh, the the one pant the set of pants that I'm wearing are my rain pants, so I should be good with that. I'm not, I'm not concerned, but you know it's a comfort thing. It's a what do you like thing. Going downhill, it's nice to have something to break the wind. But so be it. So that's a big brain dump for day one. From Seal Rock, Oregon. It's still really foggy. I've got like a light mist of or a light covering of water on everything I have, including me. It's fine, though. It's warm enough that it's not an issue. And it's actually kind of refreshing when all is said and done. I think the one tricky thing is that I'm going to be in a situation where nothing will ever get dry, uh, barring a kind of change in the weather and maybe getting some sun. Um, but we'll have to see how that all goes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll just have to make do with what we got. Uh, I do not have a rain jacket, as I think I've mentioned. Uh, that's probably not ideal, suboptimal, but again, we'll make do with what I got. The uh, traffic has been a little bit trafficy, uh, but not a problem. I tend to wear earbuds, not at a level that uh, becomes distracting, but at enough so that it just drowns out that monotonous, what you just heard, that car going by you. And I think that it actually ends up helping me concentrate. At least I feel that way. And uh, that's sort of how I go with. I know a lot of people, that's controversial. Some people think that you need to have your ears open the whole time. But I think that sometimes with a monotonous car going by, <laughs> that that sometimes you end up tuning that out. And I think that with some other sound, I, what that ends up doing is I'm a little bit more aware, but it's not that repetitive uh, uh, way that I think that my brain will start to tune things up. So that's my solution. It's been easy riding so far. This bike performs just better than any of the other bikes that I have in terms of just ease of getting up and over short little grades, which is what I've had so far. It's largely flat, but it's not that big of a deal. So getting uh, maybe some breakfast in Waldport coming up. Uh, then, of course, I got Florence, where uh, which will be towards the end of the day, or at least the end of my riding day. And I'll pick some stuff up there. It's it's pretty. It's pretty. The fog, fog on the coast. It's, it's the best. <laughs> Waldport, Oregon is a beautiful little town on a bay, a lake, Elysia. I should look up, there's a northwest pronunciation thing that I should be looking up before I do this, but I clearly am not. About 9.30 in the morning, needed to get some kind of breakfast in me, so I did do that. I went up and down and ended up at a subway because I was like, I think I needed something a little more substantial, and the only other thing that was open for breakfast was more of a bar, and although I'm a fan of the bars not at breakfast time. So uh, here I am, uh, gonna be moving on. It's chilly and I uh, need to get moving, get some warmth going. Well, that was interesting. I just ran into the ACA official sponsored tour, sponsored, paid, whatever, commercial tour that the ACA does. And I thought, oh, they must be doing the Oregon coast. No, they are finishing up their Trans Am ride, which is, is great. I ended up talking to one of the riders and uh, 
they are looking at doing the Pacific Coast once they finish up in Florence. Uh, the interesting thing is, I don't think he's going to enjoy the, uh, the traffic too much. You know, when you do the Trans Am, and I think Carrie Gross talked about this. Did she? Someone did recently. I want, I'll, I'll give the credit to Carrie because she does a great podcast. When you're used to qu- the quiet Trans Am uh, and the, the low traffic that is for so much of it, and then you get on the Pacific Coast. Oh, you know what? It was James Rosen. It was James our, from our beginner series. Sorry, Carrie. I, you get credit for a great podcast, but this was James who came up with us. You're, you get used to wider berth, less traffic. Then you have this huge, huge, huge traffic bump on the Oregon coast in particular. And as I'm riding right now, there's great shoulders. But for a lot of the Pacific Coast riders I've talked about on the pod, they are minimal. And that can be, that's tough if you're wanting more. If, you know, I won't, I won't say, you know, I mean, if you're nervous about it, if you don't like it, I mean, I can totally understand all that. I don't, and I don't blame anybody for bailing on the Pacific Coast Ride because the traffic's too tight. It's great in spots, like right now, and then it's terrible in spots. Like, I'm definitely going to be riding through later in the week. But anyways, it was nice to uh, chat up with uh, some folks who are on a, by my standards, a super cush ride. The, the sag wagon was stocked to the brim, had all their gear, uh, but they looked like they were having fun. Definitely a way to do it. It's nice to ride unloaded. Um, oh, I should I should mention uh, my experience so far, having gone eh, roughly 20 miles, I guess so or so on this. It is so different and nice with this setup. I am experiencing a bit of a headwind which is unusual, um, and ordinarily I would say, oh, my bad luck, and I guess it is a little bit of bad luck when you're going southbound and getting a headwind. However, uh, it has definitely shown what a difference it makes to not have, you can feel that gust there, perhaps you can hear it, uh, it, it the lack of pull that I'm getting, I'm, I'm cutting through it pretty well. So that's kind of an intriguing uh argument for a setup like this. Now, the the downside is, I realized this morning, I don't have as many places to segregate wet wet stuff from dry stuff. So that's kind of an issue, but not not insurmountable, just fewer options. In any event, that's uh, that's been some interesting first observations from uh, the day the day one setup, but uh, I'm going I'm going pretty fast. Uh, and maybe I'm not going as fast as I could, but I'm keeping my... Uh, I'm, I'm just sort of getting back into the sort of ride mentality. Since uh, this is a little of a shorter day. And a little bit of a lower effort day. I'm just sort of easing into it. And enjoying the heck out of it. It'll be interesting. I may be getting passed by some of these folks in a little bit. Because they look like they were gearing up to go. And uh, they're finishing up in Florence, so... Awesome for them. Just want to do an over-the-air recording here during uh, this accident. The road is dead because there's almost no traffic that can get through from the north, and it comes through in bunches. Now you can hear emergency folks responding right now, but yeah, it's actually kind of nice as a southbound cyclist that. Uh, the southbounders can't get through quite as much. They are sending fire now. Which is fine and probably good, but uh, it's not necessary. It's kind of like a big old fender bender. I, I was going to record something, but it was on an uphill for me, and I just wanted to get around it. And I didn't want to add anybody's frustration by what's probably a very bad day for them uh, and the stress that they know that they're impacting other other folks who are trying to get up and down the coast but it made what's normally a low grade uh, tricky part for a cyclist going up uh, Pasita Head I think I'm pronouncing that right 
uh, and getting to the uh, over the sealed caves, which is sort of the highest point there. You know, it's gonna it's got minimal shoulder and a good chunk of it makes that it made that headache uh, a lot easier because the traffic was at a standstill. I was I was going up the meat of it, and then when I got on the other side of it, it's been very quiet, as you can now hear. From Honeyman State Park. It's been a great day. I um, just had a dinner of champions. Uh, I had soft pretzels, which were frozen, that kept my beer cooler <laughs> so I could uh, take care of a few things and enjoy the dunes. Got some video there. That was pretty fun. Uh, had a nice night here in the camp so far. Ran into a mother daughter uh, tandem that uh, the mother is from. Rondecoit, uh, which is a town not far from where I grew up, and they live in Ithaca, so we had lots of New York stuff to talk about, which was kind of fun. I always run into people from my neck of the woods uh, when I'm out traveling, which is kind of fun and interesting. Uh, to the campsite to my left as I'm looking at it, visual medium, um, <laughs> is a gentleman f- uh, originally from South Africa. His name is Tim, so it's easy to remember his name, and it's been a lovely night. It's been really good. I uh, enjoyed the spending some time on the dunes. I went to a different part. Uh, for those who remember my time with Daniel, we hiked over and above and beyond a whole bunch of dunes. I was not feeling that today. Um, feeling as adventurous, as beautiful as a site it was, it was. I just ended up going over uh, a little bit to the right, and I noticed that there was uh, the dunes sort of came right into the lake. So I climbed up the dune a little bit, but had a beautiful view of the lake. And as the mist was coming in over the hills and the dunes, uh, it was just a beautiful view. So I was able to just sort of enjoy the latter part of the afternoon there. Uh, I was able to get a better signal there, which was good uh, because I was able to get a phone call in with back home. I was able to listen to the first Bills pregame or preseason game. Yes, I know. <laughs> so uh, that was that was something. And that was um, a good way to end the day. Overall takeaways from day one. I am riding very strong, probably stronger than most day ones. And I don't know to wh- what to attribute that to whether that I'm packing a few fewer LBs or if uh, because I'm on my good bike and I'm often not on Sequoia when I'm out here. I'm usually on the Goblin, which frankly, I mentioned this before, it is a little bit too small of a frame for me. It's fine, but I think a properly fitted bike is a lot better. So Sequoia, I just kind of munch up hills. I think the third thing is I, I really am digging the setup, the no pannier setup. Now, it's not to say that I won't ride with panniers in the future. I'm still sort of committed to fully loaded bike touring as, as an option. But, but, but this sort of modified bike packing setup really seems to make a difference, especially when the winds were turning around and whipping towards me as a headwind, which happened more frequently today than I expected. I don't know if that's going to be something that will continue or not, but we'll have to see. I think that I am considering uh, coming up with a possible uh, bifurcation of my crazy Monday. I'm going to at least look into the option of where I would split that 73 mile day on Monday rather than doing the whole thing. Now, what that would mean is I I have an Airbnb reservation. I can cancel it. I just have to, I think, swallow the Airbnb fees, which is like 10 bucks or less. You know, I think that that might be something that I may consider doing just as an, to keep my options open. The downside to that is uh, Yahats is not exactly a, a place with lots of lodging options. It would be a then Tuesday night where I would be staying there um, because what I want, I would want to stay there just so that I would be very close to that very early morning bus, which would be the first of three buses to take me uh, all the way back to Portland. I just would like to kind of hit them right. So I'm, I'm kind of considering maybe extending this trip an extra day. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how I ride tomorrow. If I ride strong tomorrow, it's it's only a 56-mile day. But if I'm feeling pretty strong tomorrow, 
maybe I will do the, the 73 mile day. I did have some headwinds today. I felt strong. I felt good. I didn't feel tired at all. Now granted, I only did 50 today, give or take, but, uh, it, it may be having the headwinds is not something to fear so much. Uh, but I do know that my strength in a ride really drops precipitously after around mile, mile 65 or so. <laughs> you know, that's only like what, uh, eight more miles and that shouldn't be a lot, but that last eight miles <laughs> can be really tough on me. Uh, so I'll have to, I'll have to figure that all out. We'll, we'll more to come on all of that. Uh, but today was great. Uh, there was the accident, um, fairly mid-sized fender bender, uh, on the ride up to seal caves. And it created a situation where there were vehicles strewn about a bit and the folks who were involved in it were actually directing traffic before law enforcement arrived. I actually have to say they were doing a pretty good job. Luckily, one of the women that was involved said nobody was hurt, which was good. Um, I was happy to see that. It was a lot of property damage, obviously, on the vehicles. But the one nice thing was that I was able to ride with a lot less traffic on the other side of it because of the kind of you go, I go, you go, I go thing. They did did it. I think they started letting cars go about every five minutes each direction. So I would have lengthy periods of time where I didn't have anybody. And on the other side of the Seal Caves, it's a lengthy downhill. So I was able to take the lane almost the entire way down uh, just by keeping an eye on the rearview mirror. And, uh, you know, it was great. Uh, rearview mirror, by the way, somebody had asked on Insta uh, whether that's been working out. It's been fantastic. It, yeah, I can spy it through the sort of hole in the left handlebar ring, which is easy and great. And I, I wish I had done this years ago, quite literally, because it's been a fantastic addition. I have full hand options on the left side for the first time in a really long time because normally I've clipped a mirror of varying types and varying <laughs> brands on that handlebar. So I, it would take up a spot. And so I'd have to skip over it or whatever if I wanted to make a hand position change. Now I've got them all. And that might also be a factor in riding stronger because it's one less thing to think about, yet I still have the mirror. And that's been really good. I would say, uh, having ridden this a bunch of times, I, I can't imagine riding this route without a mirror. It is just too difficult to go without that information while you're on portions of 101 in Oregon where, frankly, there aren't really good shoulders and parts. Uh, Lincoln County is, I have to say, fantastic. Lane County, which I'm in right now, is, as I recall, uh, gets a, dicey and there's a lot of chip seal and it's, Lane County just does, is not as good. Uh, so I'm going to be happy to get through it tomorrow. Um, but I've got the mirror, so at least that ameliorates that, even though the shoulders aren't so big in some places. Tomorrow is a uh, fun day, a uh, beautiful day, minimal amount of climbing. There's a couple of hills of note. I'll be going over a really, really big bridge, which hopefully I'll be able to get on video for the first time. It, it's, it's the one that I like the least because it is the the longest of the climbs to get to the bridge it's uh, my recollection is that there isn't a good sidewalk um and if the, there is i'm gonna have to remind myself i just remember that this is the one i like the least it's it's strewn with garbage and stuff so um it's either a really small shoulder a practically non-existent shoulder not unlike the one going over the columbia river to astoria um, but, um, well, obviously I'll write it tomorrow and share it with you because my recollection clearly stinks, but I know I don't like it because it's a bit of a climb and there's a lot of stuff. Also, my, my recollection is the book says that, uh, the locals, uh, are big on giving tickets or something for holding up traffic, which I've never had that. Uh, but I think it's in my head. So <laughs> there's that. In any event, uh, this is the route to Sunset Bay State Park, which last year, was redoing the hiker biker campsite and it was garbage <laughs> last year because they had had us on like this you know old car camping spot so it was all like we were on pavement literally which was just garbage uh, but i'm hopeful for um, a much better more constructed one because the state of oregon does good by us so despite the fact that i said it was garbage last year i'm expecting great things because oregon state parks rock all right that will do it for day one a plus, loved it. 
as usual. Looking forward to day two. Looking forward to getting some more stuff out on a Friday. I'm expecting traffic volumes to maybe increase. It was high volume today. Um, It's hot inland. It's smoky further south. I think a lot of people are going to flee to the coast this weekend. I think that's going to impact riding. We'll have to see how it goes. But tomorrow, Sunset Bay. Off we go. Statistics for days zero and one. Bus miles logged 143. Bike miles biked 52.5 plus maybe a mile or two in there for some beer runs. I should measure that one of these days. Campsites two. Ghosted on people at my campsite one. Beers, yes, indetermined. Cross country sag wagon encounters one. Flats, zero. Sea lions, yes, undetermined number. And we like to end off the show, as always, with a big thank you to the supporters of the show who are members of the Pedal Shift Society. If you like what you hear, you can help maintain Pedal Shift as an independent, listener-supported voice while expanding the offerings. We're talking a buck, two bucks, five bucks a month. Helps with the cost of hosting the podcast and the website. You can do it for a bit and cancel any time. One-shot support is welcome as well. If you're not into the small monthly thing, check it all out at pedalshift.net slash society. On to the society. Ethan Georgie, Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lane, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart, Josiah Matthews, Keith Nagel, Brock Dennis, Thomas Skedow, Seth Krieger, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Noah Schroer, Harry Telgatis, John Sikorsky, Richard Killian, Chris Barron, Brian Wren, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Paul Mulvey, Stuart Bucket, Todd Stutz, Mr. T, Roxy Arning, Nathan Poulton, Harry Hugel, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Ruth Divorcey, Michelle Miller, Matthew Lewis, Michael Baker, Billy Crafton, Paul Culbertson, Scott Culbertson, Matt Perry, Danielle Jepson, Cody Florchinger, Tom Beninati, Bobby Rupel, Roy Everett, Greg Braithwaite, John Mayer, William Cairns, Sandy Pizio, Richard Patch, Mark Messer, Jeff Muster, Seth Pollock, Dave Roll, Joseph Quinn, John Baxter, and Susan Brewster. And thanks also to all past contributors and anonymous contributors for helping make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift Project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available. 